Think of any card. You got one? I got one. What's the card? Uh, the King of Hearts. The King of Hearts. Shh. Not the Queen of Spades? Mm -mm. The King, the King of, of Hearts? hearts? Yeah. Okay. Cool. The King of Hearts? Yes. Now here's your question. Okay. How many bitcoins does it take to get some goddamn respect in this town? What's going on guys? It's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. Thank you for joining me on this Sunday afternoon. We are here making yet another video. Shout out to everyone that's been liking, subscribing, and commenting. You're awesome. If we have a look, we see mild red across some of the top coins. Not really a big deal. Not really affecting the market cap. Bitcoin dominance relatively the same. So we're ha we are having these mild pullbacks, but I think the thing is you're seeing a lot of these other altcoins really surge. For example, you have Nano up 23%, Walton Chain 20%, percent wand chain 15 pundi x 15 icon 13 loom 8 substratum 7 so we're seeing some nice gains across the board here metaverse tron loopring ontology bitcoin so it's more of a, a altcoin it's been an altcoin day for the past couple days the altcoins have been doing really well we've seen v chain up almost I think it hit like 100% over the course of the week. Obviously, Icon, massive resurgence from its low, incredible lows that we saw across the board. So it's to be expected to see some, some of these altcoins rallying as well. If you talk to some of these major investors, you'll see there's some of these articles starting to come out where they're saying that they believe that the Bitcoin sell-off could be possibly over. Technical signs and major investors believe so. So Lily Katz at Bloomberg reported that GTI Vera convergence divergence indicators suggest that Bitcoin downtrend is is over. By the way, I'm not like a technical analysis kind of guy, so I'm just going off what they say. So experts have echoed a similar sentiment, expecting the bear market of cryptocurrency to come to an end in the upcoming months. More importantly, the demand for Bitcoin at large cryptocurrency exchanges and trading platforms has not declined throughout the bear market. So if any of you were able to check out the live stream that I did yesterday, we were actually talking about how even though the prices were low, the volume is still massive and it's increasing over time. So that was some you know, if you look at the chart right here, that's what I was getting really excited about. Kind of, well, first of all, if you could see right here, you could just see how it's kind of doing like a little dip. Like you see how it's kind of like a bowl shape and it looks like it's starting to come off. So you could see we had the lowest volume right here around June 18th and we haven't seen lower volume since then. And some of the peaks that we've actually hit have rivaled you know, almost all the way back to what we were seeing in March even. So that's actually a really good thing. And if you zoom in, of course, this thing is super sensitive. You know, you are seeing that <clears throat> it has like a nice trajectory right here. So obviously not a TA analyst, just something that I was noting. And you do have Maddie Greenspan saying that the chart is sensational despite falling prices this year. Clients eToro are increasing, not decreasing their BTC holdings. So you can see right here, look, even though the... the um the chart is going down, you're seeing that they're increasing their holdings here. So it says that despite these adjustments, however, we've not seen a significant dip in demand for digital assets. As the market matures, more investors are expanding their portfolios to include crypto. Earlier this month, you had News BTC reporting that despite the bear market, cryptocurrency exchanges have been demonstrating large volumes and high profit margins. We've heard some people saying that some of these volumes have been manipulated. That is something that's just going to happen regardless. A lot of that had to do with them trying to get listed on coin market cap because coin market cap had certain things put into place but then cmc responded to those allocations and decided that maybe that wasn't exactly the best way for them to utilize these metrics to decide what exchanges get listed but i think the overall point we're trying to make here is that the demand is increasing even though the price has decreased so just keep that in mind as well this is funny Check this out. So it says CNBC tweets have been a contrarian Bitcoin price indicator with 95% accuracy. So in a nutshell, whatever the hell and uh, CNBC is telling you to do, do the absolute opposite. So they had their most famous thing right here where they had, they were basically, they had a thing where they were telling people how to buy Ripple and people were laughing because they were, they, the video that came out was telling you how to buy. But at the time of making the video, Ripple was at around $3 and then later they came came out with a video showing you how you can sell Ripple and at that point it was below $1. So basically people were making fun of them like buy high, sell low. So if you come over here and you have a look at the chart, somebody actually broke it down and they did all the positive uh, comments that came out from CNBC and all the negative comments that came out from CNBC. And with a 95% chance, 
Every time they came out with positive news, something bad happened. And every time they came out with negative news, something positive happened. So lesson to be learned here, just whatever CNBC does, do the complete opposite. On top of the fact that they have now recently come out with this Bitcoin boom or bust video, meet the millionaire who lives in a treehouse and says that Bitcoin is the future. So if we have a look at this video, it is somewhat cringeworthy a little bit. But I don't know if this is how I really want to be represented for Bitcoin, but we can have a look real quick. Here. Yes, this is where you enter Wonderland. Ah. A serene paradise. There's even a saloon. No. With his bleach blonde hair, board shorts, and tiger paw scarf, Justin, aka Crypto Kid, may not be Central Casting's idea of a millionaire. Yeah, ow. <laughs> the living room. You can sit down if you care. So I think this is basically just something trying to get some views. Ugh, what are you going to do? Moving on. So we have Bitcoin mining now consuming 1% of the world's electricity. They're saying that that is more than the entire state of New York. So it takes roughly five gigawatts a day to mine all the Bitcoins. And if you want to have another comparative, five Five gigawatts a day can power around four million homes or pretty much all of London with its population of some eight million people. So there's more criticism coming out about Bitcoin being a complete waste of, of energy. However, on the flip side, you're seeing DPW Holdings is restoring and reactivating the Valatai Falls hydroelectric dam near power uh, to power its subsidiaries crypto mining farm in the state of New York. So it says the dam will be fully dedicated to the mining facility owned and operated by Super Crypto Mining. The farm will have access to a clean, renewable, and cheap source of electricity, therefore giving it a competitive advantage in the country. So the state of New York will see Bitcoin mining operation up and running no later than Q4 of this year. Also to note, New York may soon be home to the world's largest Bitcoin mining center if the ambitious plans being undertaken by CoinMint fall into place. So I think as time goes by, we're going to basically have no choice but to figure out ways to have these Bitcoins be mined in a renewable manner. I'm seeing a lot of people move to like wind and solar and hydro. So as much as this is a huge concern, I personally think that as long as we do it in a renewable way, you know, for example, think about something like a waterfall, right? Hydro. It's just going to keep flowing over and over and over again, hopefully, unless there's a drought, right? So that to me is renewable. I think that over time, this will sort itself out. The whole concern about cost for mining Bitcoins, I don't see that being a problem for too much longer. So I'm very excited excited to see how these uh, companies look towards better alternatives, greener alternatives, and I think we're going to see a huge shift in Bitcoin mining styles moving forward. Let's talk about some coin news. So we have Cargo X, supplier of blockchain solutions for logistics, has completed the official test shipment of a container with its smart bill lading. So Cargo X said that its smart bill of lading was issued electronically and transferred with the help of ultra secure and reliable public blockchain network in just minutes instead of days or weeks and the chances of loss, theft, or damage of the bill of lading have been dramatically reduced to near zero. So there you go. Supply chain logistics. Boom. We also have this VeChain uh, tweet. So an NFC chip embedded in a polo shirt. You can see they scan it. And then it says, congratulations. Uh, it's been verified. Your product has been verified by VeChain. So that's just more moving forward from that product as well. We also have Arc really looking to ramp up their... Uh, promotion, really trying to get their name out there a little bit. Oops. So you see right here, um, they have a commercial. It's about two, almost three minutes long. So it's this girl. She pulls in with her motorcycle. She goes to this like abandoned warehouse type thing or something. Well, not abandoned warehouse. And she tries to figure how she can do a uh, dap on her own blockchain. And then it's basically her meeting with all these guys, doing all this code online. And yeah, then she's able to build a dap in less than an hour. And then there you go. That's a commercial for ARK. So ARK is out there. They're doing their thing. They're promoting. So Toshi Times recently reported on the launch of a new smart contract language for the Cardano blockchain by IOHK. The language is called Marlowe and is aimed primarily at writing smart contracts based on financial transactions. So in this case, the field is financial transactions because of the irreversible nature of blockchain. There was seen to be a need for a language that could more effectively handle transactions with little to no chance of errors concerning traditional 
languages from the white paper. Now, we have seen things like this on Ethereum. I've seen certain different types of ERC standards now where you do have this issue where you can have the funds sent back to you. So they're saying, although this is related to Cardano, the team also released Meadow, which is a browser-based tool for testing smart contracts on Cardano. So along with Project Icarus, a lightweight wallet, IOHK is really pushing usability and functioning um, in the Cardano project. So we were talking a lot about this yesterday as well. Adoption, making it easy for people to use. You know, people don't want to have these gigantic uh, phrases that they have to remember. Um, so these types of things are going to make it a lot easier moving forward for people. Making, I mean, essentially you're making it idiot proof, right? Kind of like how, I don't know if you guys know, like in the US. So they actually, so cars, when you drive cars, it tells you when your tank's on E. And it used to be if your car hit E, you would actually run out of gas. But obviously people were so freaking stupid, they weren't filling up their cars. So car manufacturers actually started making them idiot proof. So even when your car would say it was on E, you still had like 10 more miles or 15 more miles that you could actually drive, right? So, I mean, kind of an interesting analogy, but when you think about what Cardano is trying to do, they've had a lot of criticism for taking so long, having, having everything be peer reviewed with scholars, but at the same time, they want it to be really user friendly and something that the masses could easily adopt. So I just have to say shout out to Cardano for that as well. Now, speaking of something that not too many people have adopted, I think Augur has the last time we checked, their daily users were around 50 users per day or something like that. Maybe it, got, maybe it went up since the last time I checked. I don't know. But this article was kind of funny. So it's some of the weirdest augers you can find on the auger platform right now. So some of them are, will Vitalik Buterin have a girlfriend by the end of 2018? Does God exist? Are funds safe? Will a P tape from Donald Trump emerge before the end of his first term? Will Bitcoin surpass 1 million by the end of 2020? And of, of course, the infamous, will John McAfee literally eat his genitals? So those are just some of the things. There were also assassination uh, things that we were seeing on Augur, like will this person be assassinated? So definitely been some crazy, crazy predictions markets here. So if you guys don't know, basically Augur, you can kind of gamble on whether or not things happen. And if they happen, you know, you can basically gamble on money essentially with these prediction markets. So I don't know how necessary these things are, but the other thing too is without like oracles, smart oracles, relaying the information to the smart contracts, things can get a little blurry. So you know, things like Chainlink, other things of that nature, definitely going to be important moving forward. And what happened? So the crowdfunding platform Indiegogo that we were just talking about announced that it was going to be implementing a token sale for a new form of fundraising for projects. The company eventually canceled its first ICO, which had raised around $5.2 million, apparently due to SEC regulations. So the Fan Control Football League, or the FCPL project, was the first ICO campaign to be launched, um, used to test the waters ahead of a wider implementation. It was looking to raise around $5 million to fund a community-run football league. After successfully raising this amount, the ICO was subsequently canceled by Indiegogo, with funds being issued to all investors. So this is what they sent to people, and to quote, it said, if you have been following the crypto and ICO markets for the last six months, you already know that the regulatory environment has been rapidly changing. The SEC provided multiple comments regarding security and utility tokens, but has not provided formal guidance. We have decided the best way to ensure compliance is is to unwind the investment opportunity and return the investors their capital. We were so close. I made a mistake, but I can't turn back. Reach for my hand. I can't. Don't give up on me. So close. The same thing happened with uh, High Times when they were doing their IPO and they were going to accept cryptocurrencies and then they decided not to last minute. These guys, they took it. Now they're issuing it back. What are you going to do? Regulations, they're still big concern. We still have that huge gray area with ICOs, especially in the United States. Now, talking about other things, what's happening, you know, this is from Bitcoin.com. So it says the owner of cryptocurrency mining electric bicycle retailer 50 Cycles which, uh, I don't know, it looks like it's a bicycle company that is able to mine. I guess you can you mine Bitcoin while you're riding the bike. I'm not really too sure how this works. But anyway, long story short, you have Scott Snaith, he's the owner, and his accounts were frozen by HSBC and Barclays just hours after he conducted a five-figure Bitcoin transaction via 
localbitcoins.com in which he sold Bitcoin for fiat currency, then deposited that into his personal bank account. It didn't even go into his company's account. And then he says his two personal bank accounts and his business account were frozen for using the Bitcoin trading site. So he said no unlawful activity has taken place, but just because the word Bitcoin was mentioned, my accounts were locked instantly. But that's the thing. If we're going to be going back and forth between Bitcoin to fiat and fiat to Bitcoin, understand that there's going to be a trade that happens. There's going to be a transaction that happens, right? I mean, at some point, if I want to cash out my Bitcoin into fiat, I have to trade it somewhere. And maybe I don't want to pay the Coinbase fees. So I'm using local Bitcoins. So this is ridiculous. He says, to me, this is a clear case of the high street banks abusing their power. It is not a criminal matter, but a personal corporate decision that someone has made in my mind that's wholly wrong. And I'm sure there are many other victims that are even less fortunate than myself. So what do you guys think? What's your opinion on this? I mean, technically the banks do have the right to do whatever they want to freeze your accounts, right? And that's the problem. That's the issue. You know, with crypto, we're worried about people coming in and stealing your money. We're worrying about phishing links and security and hacks. But with the banks, we literally give them permission to do whatever they want. And then things like this happen. So they said that um, while H uh, HSBC has reinstated his account. Barclays maintained the freeze. So he stated, I'll never be able to bank with Barclays again. I'm a professional business owner taking advantage of a new financial technology. And it looks like the banks are failing to keep up with their customers habits. We are the ones being punished. The banks are deliberately creating obstacles. They are anti-digital currency and displaying a new form of financial discrimination. So there you have it. Banks just at it again. And finally, just to end on kind of a silly note today. So Bill Cosby, it says, despite to salvage what's left of his, or desperate to salvage what's left of his $500 million fortune, Bill Cosby is apparently converting his cash into virtual currency so he can keep it away from his creditors, the government, and long-suffering wife Camille, according to Radar Online. So it says he's moved about $5 million into Bitcoin after an expert told him it's practically untraceable and impossible for anybody but him to retrieve. The expert said it couldn't be taken in divorce, bankruptcy, or by the government in any liens. So there you go. Um, I mean, it's not 100% impossible to retrieve. However, if he's intelligent enough, sure. I mean, if you can store the seed phrase maybe in your mind, you know what I'm saying? Like, remember the 12 word, don't have anything on paper, don't have any private keys. That's kind of like what Andreas Antonopoulos sort of does. You know, he like remembers the phrases so that basically the Bitcoins are in his mind, right? So if they take these routes, possibly, I just think that's kind of funny that he's deciding to do that, getting into Bitcoin. However, on, on, on the one hand, you do have him kind of promoting the negative side of Bitcoin, right? Like, so that's not really good publicity, but hey, what are you going to do? Any publicity, we'll take it, right? Maybe. I don't know. That being said, what's up, guys? It's the weekend. Hope you had a great time. That being said, my name's K-Dub. This is Crypto Zombie. Oh, one more thing before I go. So I'm not going to be around next week. I'm actually going on a vacation. As you guys know, my girlfriend, she works for a school. So obviously, summertime, they get off. I feel bad. We really haven't done as much as I'd like to do. So we've decided to go on a little vacation. However, I do have some pre-recorded content. And you guys know I'm going to end up probably waking up at like 5 o'clock in the morning and doing news videos anyway. So most likely I will be making content regardless. But if for some reason content's a little slow next week, just give me a break, guys. I don't know how the internet's going to be. So that being said, shout out to everyone that's been liking, subscribing, and commenting. You're freaking amazing. I love you. That being said, my name's K-Dub. This is Crypto Zombie. Until next time, stay crypto. And of course, peace out.